So the machete is a brand new DLC weapon from Season 2 of Black Ops Cold War and you can unlock it for free with a weapon challenge in multiplayer and warzone and today I'll show you how to complete this challenge to unlock it easily and quickly. So I'm going to quickly explain the challenge, give the best class setup and game modes for this and then some quick tips to help you get the challenge done even faster. So make sure you stick around until the end of the video so you don't miss out on any important tips. Very quickly before we get into the video I'm also doing a COD points giveaway for the Season 2 Battle Pass. If you're interested in winning some COD points go and check out that Battle Pass video, it'll be a link for that in the description. Without Without further ado, let's get into the guide. So in order to earn the machete, the challenge says that you need to earn a backstabber medal in 15 different matches. For anyone that doesn't know, a backstabber medal is where you kill an enemy from behind with a melee weapon such as a knife. And as a quick note, this needs to be completed in 15 different matches, so you can't do all 15 kills in one match and also you can't just leave straight away after the match. If you leave early, the progress will seem to count as it has before, so it kind of looks like it has, but then if you come off the game and go back, the progress will reset because you haven't done it properly, so you must stay in the match until it finishes. And I know obviously it's quite boring to stay in the match once you've finished that one backstabber medal kill per game, so I would literally just have another weapon that you need to do or some other challenge that you need to focus on so that you can quickly get your backstabber medal and then do whatever else you need to do in the match rather than being bored for the rest of it. Anyway, if you want to check if your kill counted and also how many kills you need left for this challenge, all you need to do is check the challenge progress bar in-game by going to the menu, clicking on edit next to your class, hovering over the machete which is at the bottom of the list in the melee weapons and then check this obviously before the match to know what you're on and then you can compare it to when you're in the match and when you think you've got the backstabber medal it should then go up by one point obviously it will only go up by one point a game and then once you do that 15 times obviously that will earn you the machete so what kind of class setup would i recommend well for the primary you want to be putting on something light so that you can run around quite easily and help you be a bit more mobile so for me i put on an smg but you can put on whatever you want it doesn't really matter too much which we won't be using it that much for the secondary i've put on the knife obviously because that's what we need to use towards the challenge and then for the perks I've put on a perk greed wildcard so you can have two perks in each slot and for perk one I've gone for forward intel which allows you to see indicators for enemy reinforcements on your minimap and the minimap also shows a larger area so it's easier to see people. I've also gone for tactical mask which gives you max resistance to flashbang and stun grenades and you're also immune to gas so it helps you get more kills without people throwing tactical equipment at you. For the second perk I've gone for quartermaster which allows you to recharge your equipment over 25 seconds so you can keep getting stun grenades we'll talk about that in just a second and then i've also put on tracker this is really useful because it allows you to see an imprint of enemy footsteps and also if you aim at enemies you can reveal them on your team's minimap so basically enemies footsteps will show up orange on the floor so you can follow these people around come up behind them and then hopefully stab them in the back to get this medal done it's a really really important perk definitely don't go without it in perk three i've gone for cold-blooded this allows you to be undetectable by spy planes whenever you're moving or planting and diffusing bombs, controlling streaks, stuff like that. So obviously you won't be spotted on UAV, but I also suggest you put on Ninja, which allows you to move more quietly. Enemies won't hear your footsteps as easily, but also your character will only speak when it's necessary. So you're not as likely to be heard and detected by the enemy. They're more likely to not notice that you're there, which is good because you need to sneak up behind them without them noticing. In terms of the equipment, it doesn't really matter what lethal you go for because it's not relevant, but for the tactical I'd recommend putting on something like a stun grenade which you can use to throw at the enemies to stun them, slow their movement, they won't be able to see properly as well, and this obviously makes it much easier to come up behind them and knife them. For the field upgrade I put on a field mic or jammer so you can either see enemies on the map or block out their radar so they can't see properly which makes them more blind to you. Now let's go on to the maps and modes that I'd recommend and then we can finally talk about the main strategy. So right now the main kind of maps and modes I recommend are ones like Nuketown 24-7, the mosh pits in the game obviously so use it if you can, hopefully it should be quite useful but it probably won't be for everyone. There's also the Apocalypse 24-7 mosh pit, this is really good and it's out at the moment, I'll explain later on why this is useful. But we've also got the face off mode which is basically 3v3 on small maps, it's really good. The match doesn't last too long as well so you don't have to stay in the match for ages. So this is quite a good one if you can get your backstab and medal done, but obviously it's a shorter match so it might be more difficult for less skilled players to get it done by the time the match finishes. We've also got free for all, this is really really good, lots of enemies, there's bound to be one of them turned around away from you that you can run up behind and stab in the back so definitely recommend it the only thing is that it's probably a longer match so you'd have to wait for it to finish which is kind of annoying but it's up to you guys and if you don't mind that's probably one of the best ones to go for don't forget if you're struggling or there's not really any playlists there or anything that's helpful you can also just go for objective modes like domination hardpoint ones like that because the enemies focus on the objective which leaves you to be able to run up behind them and stab them in the back and if you guys are in warzone i'd recommend playing plunder as this gives you infinite lives immediate custom loadout and stuff like that 
like that. So that's the main kind of class setup. Now let's talk about the actual strategy and the main tips to put this into practice. And we're going to be first talking about multiplayer, but then we're going to be talking about Warzone as well. So obviously what you want to be doing is running around the map and obviously we need to knife enemies in the back. So you want to try and flank around the edges of the map get into people's spawns and pick them off. You're kind of very vulnerable with your combat knife when coming across a group of people, so if there's lots of people there, try and only focus on one person, get one person away from the rest, and if you can't, you could always switch to your primary, take down a few of the enemies that you're not interested in, and then focus on that last one. As I kind of said earlier, you can pick longer game modes if you're struggling to get this done in a match, so don't forget about that. And if you're also struggling or find it would be helpful, don't forget you can camp behind an object or near an objective, uh, particularly on high flow areas of the map. So for example, behind a fence of the side alleyway of the house on Nuketown. This is good because you can wait behind that for enemies to run past and when they do, you can then leap up behind them and stab them in the back and they won't suspect you're there generally. The new Apocalypse map, which I was talking about earlier, that's also really good because it's got loads of little like dark parts that you can't really see very well, like windy flank routes, great hiding spots, stuff like that. So enemies actually have a hard time in some of the areas and it's really easy for you to hide behind a piece of cover or an object, wait for someone to walk past and then sneak up behind them and stab them. So it's really useful in that regard. So don't forget about that. And if you're running behind an enemy, don't use the knife animation until they are close enough for you to kill them and try to crouch or make less noise with your feet when running to avoid making them aware of your presence. Obviously ninja is good, but it's not perfect, so they may still hear a little bit of noise and you don't want to be running so all they can hear is tap 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 from your shoes. So if you go into crouch mode, you won't make as much noise if you gently kind of sneak up to them. It's much easier to stab them in the back without them noticing. Now obviously if they're running, you can obviously run too, but sometimes they will notice that someone's running behind them and so they'll then turn around. So you've got to be aware of that and try to be as sneaky as you can. And I think it's important to note as well that generally you can knife the enemy anywhere on the rear aspect of them. So for example, the back of the leg, the bum, their back or the back of the head. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the back but it needs to be obviously the back part of them. So try to aim with your crosshairs um, of the knife as close to the back as possible because sometimes otherwise what can happen is that when you go to stab them, your character will kind of spin the enemy around so they, they automatically get stabbed in the side or in the front of them instead of in the back and obviously this won't count as backstabber medal which is annoying because if you'd lined it up slightly better you may have gotten the backstabber medal. So if possible try and line it up so that it's near the back otherwise you might miss and when your character lunges it will stab them in the wrong place and it won't count. So if you've got the chance and the enemy isn't aware, make sure you've lined up so that you're not going to hit them in the wrong place. Most of the time, if you didn't get a backstabber medal, it's likely that it didn't count towards the challenge progress. All right, now let's move on to Warzone. And I think just before we start on this, it's important to say at the time of making this video, it's a free to play weekend for multiplayer. So anyone who's a, just a free to play Warzone player, you can hop on to multiplayer to get this challenge done. It's a lot easier on multiplayer than it is in Warzone probably. So if you're struggling, hop on to multiplayer for this free to play weekend to get it done before you're locked back to just Warzone. Okay, so what's my strategy for Warzone then? So obviously you want to be playing Plunder because you've got your own class setup and you've got infinite lives. You want to stay in the plane until you're kicked out at the start of the match. And obviously this is quite a common strategy. Pretty much everyone knows about this by now. Yeah, you want to just stay in the plane until all of the people that are potentially inactive get kicked out. Now, for Warzone, obviously it's a different class setup to Cold War, so the important aspects of the class setup which you need, other than like the combat knife, are um, the double time perk so you can run faster, tracker so you can see enemy footsteps, and the dead silence field upgrade so that you have quiet footsteps and you can run up quicker behind an enemy. So, those are the main aspects of the class setup. What do you actually do when you're in plunder? So like I said, wait in the plane until it gets to the edge of the map and you get kicked out, and then drop with those players. Some of them may be inactive, like I say, and then you can either repetitively knife someone in the back when you get down to the ground hopefully they'll be inactive so it'll be easier or alternatively you can shoot them into last stand and then knife them from behind to get the challenge done now i can't say with 100 percent certainty that this works because i didn't test this in this game but they had the same challenge in modern warfare which it did count when you did this so give it a try is a good chance that if you shoot them into last stand and then knife them in the back or you know anywhere from behind that will count so you don't have to rush to knife them in the back immediately because the thing about that is if you're doing that they'll probably turn around anyway to try and kill you so it's not very convenient so shoot them into last stand and then knife them in the back i'm pretty certain that that will work but obviously just remember not to shoot them completely to death otherwise if you do that you can't knife them and then it won't count you also need to make sure that if you do shoot them into last stand try to stop any teammates or any other enemies getting to and killing the down players before you do 
you can use obviously like your dead silence and double time perk to run over to an enemy faster to kill them quicker and also some players will instantly try and like kill themselves so they can respawn more quickly so don't mess about and knife them as soon as possible don't wait because they might kill themselves and then it won't count so that is how to complete the challenge to unlock the machete in black ops cold war and warzone if you do that obviously you'll get this weapon it's pretty decent and it's a nice free weapon challenge again so hope you found this useful if you did be sure to leave a like it really helps me out and feel free to subscribe with your post notifications turned on stay up to date with all my latest black ops cold war and warzone videos also feel free to check out any of my cold war camera guides i'm going to be covering the outbreak event that's out at the moment i'm also covering the new dlc weapons and doing best class setups on those for season two so if you're interested in that feel free to go and check it out and i've also got loads of other guides like how to level up tears fast on my channel that battle pass video if you want to check that out you can do so to enter the giveaway so like i say hope you found this useful feel free to check out any other guides i've got on the new season two content there's loads coming and there's obviously loads here as well thanks for watching and hopefully i'll see you all on the next video